Infectious mononucleosis The best treatment options. Infectious mononucleosis is a contagious illness typically caused by the Epstein Barr virus. The infection can be spread by saliva, and the incubation period for mono is 4 to 8 weeks. Using contaminated items, such as drinking glasses or toothbrushes, can spread the infection. Most adults have laboratory evidence indicative of a previous infection with EBV and are immune to further infection. The symptoms of mono include fever, fatigue, sore throat, and slim lymph nodes. The diagnosis of mono is confirmed by blood tests. Mono can cause liver inflammation and enlargement of the spleen. Vigorous contact sports should be avoided during the illness and recovery phase to prevent rupture of the spleen. The long-term prognosis for most people with mono is excellent, and severe complications are rare. Infectious mononucleosis Infectious mononucleosis, mono, kissing disease, and glandular fever are all terms popularly used for the very common infection typically caused by the Epstein-Barr virus, but other viruses can also cause the disease. This article focuses specifically on the EBV as a cause of mono since this is the characteristic virus associated with the condition. The symptoms of infection with EBV include fever, fatigue, malaise, and sore throat. The designation mononucleosis refers to an increase in A particular type of mononuclear white blood cells in the bloodstream relative to the other white blood cells as a result of the viral infection. Scientifically, EBV is classified as a member of the herpes virus family. Cause of mono The EBV that causes mono is found throughout the world. By the time most people reach adulthood, an antibody against EBV can be detected in their blood. This means that most people, sometime in their lives, have been infected with EBV. The body's immune system produces antibodies to attack and help destroy invading viruses and bacteria. These specific EBV antibodies can be detected in the blood of people who have been infected with mono. When infection occurs in childhood, the virus most often produces no symptoms. It is estimated that only about 10% of children who become infected with EBV develop the illness. Likewise, probably because of immunity from prior infection, adults typically do not develop the illness. Most cases of infectious mononucleosis occur in the 15-24 age group. While there are other illnesses falling under the broad classification of mononucleosis that can cause similar symptoms and an increase in blood lymphocytes, the mononucleosis caused by the EBV is by far the most common risk factors for mono. The EBV can infect anyone. As previously discussed, the majority of people have become infected with the virus by the time that they reach adulthood and the majority of these infections produce no symptoms and are not recognized as mono. Mono is most often diagnosed in adolescents and young adults, with a peak incidence at 15-17 years of age. However, it can also be seen in children. Generally, the illness is less severe in young children and may mimic the symptoms of other common childhood illnesses, which may explain why it is less commonly diagnosed or recognized in this younger age group. Symptoms of Mono The initial symptoms of mono are a general lack of energy or malaise, fatigue, a loss of appetite, and chills. These initial symptoms can last from one to three days before the more intense symptoms of the illness begin. The more common intense symptoms include a severe sore throat and fever, which may be persistent. It is typically the severe sore throat that prompts people to contact their doctor. Signs of mono. In addition to a fever from 102 F 104 F, the most common signs of mono are a very reddened throat and tonsils and swollen lymph nodes in the neck that typically occur on both sides. The tonsils have a whitish coating in at least one third of the cases. The spleen is an organ found in the left upper abdomen underneath the rib. 
cage, which becomes enlarged or swollen in about half of patients with mono. An enlarged liver and abnormalities in liver function tests may be detected. Some of patients have a splotchy red rash over the body, which has a similar appearance to the rash of measles. Early in the course of disease, a temporary swelling of both upper eyelids may appear. Diagnose infectious mono. The diagnosis of mono is suspected by the doctor based on the above symptoms and signs. Mono is confirmed by blood tests that may also include tests to exclude other possible causes of the symptoms, such as tests to rule out strep throat. Early in the course of the mono, blood tests may show an increase in one type of white blood cell. Some of these increased lymphocytes have an unusual or atypical appearance when viewed under a microscope, which suggests mono. More specific blood tests, such as the monospot and heterophile antibody tests, can confirm the diagnosis of mono. These tests rely on the body's immune system to make measurable antibodies against the EBV. Unfortunately, the antibodies may not become detectable until the second or third weeks of the illness. A blood chemistry test may reveal inflammation and abnormalities in liver function. Diagnostic tests performed in the laboratory may be of value to rule out other causes of sore throat and fever, including cytomegalovirus infection, strep throat, and less common conditions such as acute HIV infection or toxoplasmosis. Treat infectious mono. Infectious mono is often managed by primary care specialists, including pediatricians and family medicine specialists. Internal medicine specialists also treat patients with mono. With complications or severe situations, other specialists including infectious disease specialists, hematologists, cardiologists, gastroenterologists, or neurologists, may be consulted. With certain complications such as rupture of the spleen, a surgeon will be involved in the patient's care. Complications of mono A common, but usually not serious, complication of mono is a mild inflammation of the liver, or hepatitis. This form of hepatitis is rarely serious, or requires treatment. It generally resolves on its own as the condition improves. The enlargement of the spleen that occurs with mono makes traumatic rupture of the spleen. A possible complication. Swelling of the throat and tonsils can also lead to airway obstruction when severe. Infection in the area of the tonsil can rarely become a serious abscess referred to as a paratonsillar abscess. Fortunately, the more severe complications of mono are quite rare, and mono is very rarely fatal in healthy people. The rare severe complications include destruction of red blood cells and inflammation of the sac surrounding the heart, the heart muscle itself, and the brain. Mono tends to be more aggressive in patients with abnormal immune systems, such as people with AIDS or those who are taking medications that suppress immune function. Prognosis of mono Most people with mono recover completely with no long-term problems. The fatigue associated with the condition may persist for a few months after the fever and other symptoms have resolved. Severe complications as described above are very rare.